FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 72320. Well, is the economy getting stronger? You need to look at the numbers, but you got to put them in perspective. Everything was up across the board last month. However, we're starting from a very low level. So let's get a perspective upon it from our good friend Carl Gibbons of Third Eye Management. Carl, it's great to have you back on the show again. Oh, by the way, uh, what's your take on it? Do you think the economy is getting better or worse? We'd like to know um, your thoughts. Just email us, kl at kerrylutz.com. So, Carl, welcome back. And, hey, we saw retail sales jump 7.5% last month, uh, but now they're trying to shut things down again. What's the real deal here? Well, uh, thanks for having me back, Kerry. It's always good to be here. Um, look, consumer spending typically drives about 70% of the nation's economy. And we went up by about 7.5 in June as stores got back and, and finally managed to reopen. But sadly, it's a blip. It is a blip. Um, the, the good thing was the sales of auto, furniture, clothing, electronics, food, and funny enough, boats, uh, all, all, all skyrocketed, all, all showed a very good return. Uh, food, actually, was just because we were staying at home, not eating out more. So, in fact, we were just literally buying more food. Um, but we are – it is a blip. Um, we are going to see another round of the virus uh, forcing us either to cocoon again, uh, hibernate again, whatever term you want to use. I think we, we are going to have another round of shutdowns and closures. And so, sadly, um, this 7.5% uh, peak is just a, a, a blip. It's just a blip just in the economy. blip. So yeah. we're going to go back again, and then what's going to happen? Well, I, 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 I don't see anything – of any strength happening now until Q4. I think things will start to return strongly at Q4. Uh, Q3 will be will be a very challenging one. Um, I said right from the get go, Q2 was going to be a nightmare and was proven right there. Q3, we've had we've had the slight readjustment. It'll start to come again. It'll start to reestablish itself at, at, at Q4. Um, we're seeing a a consistent. Um, return to work. The uh, unemployment figures, as you know, uh, hit uh, 18 uh, million. Uh, it's peaked. Uh, it, it peaked, but, but now even that's showing a slight decrease. It will never go down as fast as it went up uh, because employers in all sectors have learned a great many lessons uh, from this uh, this pandemic and are re-looking at their entire structure, whether it be full-time, part-time, work from home. They're re everybody's re everybody is re-evaluating everything. It's not just retail sales. Everybody's re-evaluating -eva everything. But we will see, again, a slow return to work, a slow drop of the unemployment figures. Um, but every what everybody wanted to see, of course, was as fast as it went up, they wanted it to see come down and it's just right. not going to happen like that so it's going to be a long slog huh it's going to be a long slog. Uh, I've been saying for quite some time now, I want everybody to uh, think in terms of twos um, I think you've got to think in terms of uh, two months, two quarters, two years because I think that's uh, that that's the time that this whole thing is going to be with us. Um, two years is is the long haul without two a shadow of a doubt. Huh? Yeah. yeah, but what is interesting though, uh, Kerry, is actually what people are buying. Um, we seem to have entered what I call a yard-based economy at the moment. Um, everybody's been forced to stay at home or been cocooning, as I said earlier, and now we've they've had no vacation. So what they're doing is they're purchasing a lot of home or outside-based. Uh, goods. Um, in some areas of the country, above ground pools, there's a three month waiting list. Really? Yeah. Uh, if it, sales of outdoors, children's toys, you know, swings, trampolines, that kind of stuff, flying off the shelves 
Wow. Bicycles. If you can lay your hand on a bicycle, uh, please contact me because I've been trying to get one and I can't get one. A 212% increase in sales. In May, they hit 1 billion. Bicycles wow. have never had sales of a billion. Well, I've got uh, a couple of e-bikes I'd like to sell. So if you're interested, <laughs> let me know. Yeah. I want right. to get a better one uh, and I'm ordering it. Uh, they just, right. uh, yeah, my e-bikes, uh, e-bikes are great. Talk about something that uh, is a partial car replacement. So yeah. uh, the well, sales every, of them every, have been crazy yeah. too. Everybody wants to get out, right? Everybody wants to get out. Sales of boats have increased. Sales of cars have increased. Anything to do with gardening. And of course, it's not just, it's not just the upgrading your uh, upgrading your yard you've got to buy all the plants and equipment that, that come along with all of that so we've we've entered this yard based uh, economy at the moment which is interesting to see how long again how long that will go and of course pets we love our pets uh, no more than uh, the the great american nation of great pet lovers 35% increase in pet spending not actually purchasing of animals but the stuff that we buy for animals the toys the all the stuff that we buy yeah. for animals oh yeah i know that's crazy you know what people do with pets Right. Or like uh, personify them and uh, you know like having a pet is like having a child now uh, I guess there's benefits and there's negatives but anyways right. Right. You know, <laughs> but you know you look at it and so so certain things and then like food uh, as far as from supermarkets go that's gone way up as well because Correct. The, yeah. and actually that's probably better on a health basis and an economic basis, right? Because you wind up uh, saving, uh, you know, you wind up uh, eating healthier, hopefully, and uh, and saving money in the process. It's always cheaper to eat at home than it is to eat out. It, it is, but what what do they what, what's that saying? Unintended consequences. Uh, Google is showing trends that searches for elasticated waistbands are up 120. <laughs> percent <laughs> So everybody's staying at home, whether they're eating better or eating uh, for comfort food. Uh, the elastic the, the elasticated waistband for trousers yeah. and, and bottoms are on the increase. Well, uh, can I? Where do I get one of those bands? Because I need to lose some weight, and I'm looking for the easy way out. But I don't want it to be invasive. You just like kind of strap it around your gut, and then it well, makes no, you feel like you're full. It's just rather than a normal fitted pair of pants, uh, it's pants with an elasticated waistband in them, so they expand with you as as your waistband. Oh, forget as your that. waist as your waist <laughs> expands as you're eating more of those comfort donuts that you're making in your home cooked donut making machine um it's uh it's it's able to expand with you oh, i've got no i've got no good news uh for our friends in the hospitality industry you guys oh. are in crisis my heart goes out to you um you know it's it's just a nightmare at the moment it's just yeah. a nightmare uh, that's for sure well uh, i was away on the weekend and i was actually at a hotel in florida on the beach and uh they actually had some people there. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I, I think the, the key to success there is we've got to help the hospitality industry help us. So if they're asking you to wear a mask, just do it. Don't get into a fight over it. Don't start arguing over it. Don't start talking about all your civil liberties, which are not being taken away because you wore a, you wore a seatbelt in the car when you were driving over there uh, to go into any pub, club, supermarket, even gas stations, they require you to wear shoes and a shirt. It's the same yeah. principle. Just just do it because the quicker we get this uh, pandemic behind us and or our, our medical uh, colleagues get the get it all under control, we've got to do everything we can to help to help. So help us, mm -hmm. you know, help them but, and, and just be sensible. All right. Well, you know, last time you mentioned going to a local restaurant and buying a gift card. Yeah. So that they get Absolutely. cash now and then you get the food later. And you uh, get the food later. Yeah. What, what else can we do here well, along uh, those lines? Um, a, a lot of restaurants now are doing the ordering online and you can either go pick it up or they will deliver it. There's been a huge in, uh, a spike there. I mean, last night I had, uh, I had barbecue ribs for dinner. I ordered it through Facebook, told them I was uh -huh. going to pick it up at 6.30, got there, it was all good to go. Yeah. It was, 
Well, mm-hmm. it, that's one thing that restaurant technology has taken a major leap forward because yes. many restaurants uh, did not have any online ordering, no apps, any of that. And now every place has an app and you know, the delivery services have provided the restaurants with the technology in exchange for getting the exclusive contract with that restaurant or deliveries. Like there's one down the street from me here called Delivery Dudes. Uh, well, right. this restaurant, they hooked in with this restaurant and now the restaurant had no delivery service before and uh, no online ordering either. And now they have both. So right. I guess there's and of course, U- Uber's, getting, Uber's getting into this technology big time now. Uber's getting into home delivery yes. uh, in, a, in a big way. Yeah. So, so I guess there's pluses and minuses, but uh, hey, luckily in Florida here, you kind of wear your mask around and then... You know, you can still go out to eat and you're always better off eating outside. But let's talk, Carl, let's take a look at these malls. I mean, they are dead men walking, aren't they? Uh, They certainly are. Uh, The malls as we know them are in their current format, they're finished. They've got no true point of differentiation anymore because the consumer no longer needs them. E-commerce has got it all covered and with their main advantage of price, and that's usually discount and transaction speed. Consumers today need a reason to visit a store. So retailers have got to transition from the transactional, the cash and the wrap or the click, click, you know, point, click, click, close to the experiential. You know, the successful retailers of the next uh, decade will be those who offer consumers an environment where they can eat, play, work, learn, discover, and even borrow merchandise. They've got to provide a sensory experience so the customers can touch, smell, hear, taste, etc., creating an emotional reaction. I call it retail entertainment. It's a theatre space that attracts and engages customers. Um, and, and that's the only way it's going to work. Um, shopping malls are going to change to become lifestyle orientated, not income orientated. So if, if people, if, our, if the listeners just think, if you think of all of your malls, um, you know the demographic of the people. When you think of a shop, you think of this mall. You think of that type of demographic of the people that shop there. And then when you think of another brand, uh, maybe you think of another uh, another type of shopping mall, uh, another location. Well, that that will also change. They'll be they'll all have to become lifestyle orientated because they've got to attract a millennial. Because right. if they have to re- if they have to rely on uh, on me and you, Kerry, they're, they're going to be a long time in the waiting. They're dead. They've got to, they're <laughs> dead. Right. Oh, that's so sad. But um, yeah. I, you know, like it used to be a fun activity to take the family to the mall and to uh, you know retail therapy, whatever. Right. I mean, right. but I find myself. I was a big mall person. I know a lot of people hate malls, but I was a big mall person because it just is like a release and escape to go to the mall. And now you're going to see empty stores, even at the best malls. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Osino Resources is a Ross Beattie-backed gold exploration company in mining-friendly Namibia. Osino's district-scale land package is situated near two producing gold mines, one of which Osino's management team previously developed and sold to B2 Gold. Osino's founders and management are experienced mining professionals who have already successfully developed and sold two companies in the past seven years. Osino has a tight share structure, and with its current treasury, it can self-fund the advancement of its gold discovery into at least 2022. This is an exploration company with drills turning that you'll definitely want to pay attention to. Osino trades in New York under the ticker O-S-I-I-F and in Toronto under the ticker O-S-I. To learn more, go to OsinoResources.com. That's OsinoResources.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. They're going to become cultural hubs, not shopping centers. So yeah. st- they still have an opportunity for people to go there. Uh-huh. Um, but what we do there will be different. The shop now will become either a pop-up shop or what I call showrooming. Yeah. So uh, you will go in there. Um, you will look at whatever it is that you want. You probably try it on um, and you will order it there. Yes. And again, it will probably be a click, click scenario. And when you get home, it will be delivered to you at home. You won't even, because it won't actually be in stock for you to take away. It will just right. be a, a a showroom for you to yeah. take to look at. Yeah. And that's the 
That's great. So, well, I mean, it's not great. It's different, but there's still a role for retail somehow. Oh, there are absolutely. some things, some things absolutely. you want to get, some things you want instant gratification for. Hey, yep. look, if I'm working on my computer here, I'm doing stuff and something breaks, I don't want to have to order it to online from Amazon. I'll go down to Best Buy and or wherever, or Guitar Center, grab, yep. grab the pieces I need. So retail, there, it's just going to shrink effectively. It's not going to disappear but it's going to feel like it's disappeared huh right what what's going to happen is we're, we're transitioning we've moved from a standardized economy the big box stores and we can now you know the the brooks brothers of this world the jc pennies the neiman marcuses the j crews uh, the list goes pier one imports the list goes on we've now gone into a customized economy kerry and the key yeah. words in the future going forward are going to be micro niche custom curated concierge you don't need to go to this big uh this big box that tries to be everything to everybody i don't think that the those names for example some of them are not going to go away i don't think we're going to you know brooks brothers is not going to go away but it is going to go away and change in the way we know it today it has to change because especially with people staying home I mean, I'm not exactly dressed to the nines right now. I've been working out of home. I've been working out of home for uh, for years now. Uh, yeah. This is my eighth year working out of the house. Right. I never did that for 40 something years, 37 right. years. But here right. I am doing it and right. I like it. And, you know, uh, as far as buying stuff for the wardrobe, like, you know, if you have problems hoarding, Accumulating stuff, I have a great way. I, I adopted this from uh, President Trump because if you remember, he passed an executive order and said every agency for every new rule they pass, they got to get rid of two. And it's turned out they've gotten rid of closer to eight. So every new clothing item that I buy, Carl, I got to get rid of two. That's my deal. I have to donate it. And it's, it's, it's led to some real soul searching, but it's been very effective. For the first right. time, I've got space in my closet. I haven't had space <laughs> in my closet in years, you know. And the closet's pretty decent size here in Florida. You yeah. know, they build big closets here. For yeah. what, I don't know. Right. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy in a pair of jeans, and I throw on my jacket when I'm doing a webcast or whatever. Right. But, but my point is, I digressed, Brooks Brothers – it's a lifestyle evolution that has helped put that company into bankruptcy, probably also too much debt. Yeah. And probably because they have a great brand. I mean, I and, personally and that's, don't, that's yeah. their saving grace, right? That is yes. their saving grace. It has a great name, great brand, great reputation. And that's why it will stick around. Yeah, a lot of in bankruptcies one, in one form or another. In fact, if you look at all of the all of those names that I that I mentioned earlier on, um, and and the fact of the matter is, they were all in financial pro they were all in financial trouble prior yeah. to Corona, prior right. to the pandemic. Yeah. The pandemic was just the the final nail in the coffin. That was it. Yeah, the final uh, or the uh, pin that popped the popped the bubble. The balloon, right? Yeah. So, and that's interesting because we have like. A store like, uh, uh, what is it called? Neiman Marcus. Uh, well, my friends call it needless markup. Yeah. And, you know, and hey, the coronavirus hit them, but they were already bought out by a hedge fund that over indebted them. So yeah. they were carrying all this debt. There was no reason for a company like that to go right. bankrupt because they're, right. the, uh, they're at the top end. And right. the top end shoppers presumably are still going to patronize them, but right. they couldn't service their debt because right. of a temporary disruption. Hey, right. let's, let's look at restaurant chains. This is something that I personally find a little distressing is that a lot of local restaurants will cease to exist. And then you're going to get chain expansion, expansion of chain restaurants. Now, I'm a foodie. One of my joys in life is going out to new restaurants, checking them out and you know, and I like going to the neighborhood spot and patronizing my neighborhood restaurant. Do you find that a little distressing that we're going to get to the, the chainification of uh, local dining? Well, what I find distressing is the, the pace at which I'm going to call them the mom and pop, the local mom and pop restaurant 
is facing up to these challenges. There's been a lot of worries me, worries me, the world is coming to an end. Well, you've, you've got to step up. You've got to adapt and you've got to change. There, there is no, there is no going back. You know, uh, we can we can only go forward, and you have to adapt with the times. And I've been saying for ages that I believe this whole turn in the economy is a huge opportunity for the smaller guy. Look, we've already been saying that the Brooks Brothers and the Neiman Marcuses of this world they've got major shareholders and financial institutions that they have to worry about. Mister and Missus Shop Owner, Mister and Missus Restaurant Owner, can make a decision now, and it can happen in the next hour. And yeah. I'm not, on the whole, I have to say, Kerry, I'm not seeing it happen. And they, they've got to. They, they've got to review their promise, you know, make it bold. They've got to identify what makes them different. Again, you know, we have a choice. Why should I go to them? Well, this they, is, they, yeah, I'm sorry. This is elemental branding. Yeah. And uh, you and I get it. But there's too many of you out there that don't understand branding, whether you're a consultant a solopreneur, a lawyer, a professional, it's all about your brand. And there's books and books written. Just give you, for instance, like I see companies pick the worst names on the planet. And in my book, Viral Podcasting, I mention who picks the best names on the planet for brands? Big Pharma. Well, Big Pharma will spend $100 million to come up with a name like Viagra or you name it, you know, there's so many of them. They're masters at branding. Uh, they're really good at it, like Prozac and Zoloft. You know, these are all brilliant brands and Big Pharma gets it. You don't have to spend a hundred million dollars to pick a decent URL. So, mm. You know, you don't need to have a crappy URL for your company. And uh, I kind of picked mine a little earlier before I wrote my book and realized how, what dumb I was, but it isn't bad. And especially now, Financial Survival Network, people get it when they see it. Right. And right. Well, well, we've all got a PhD in hindsight, right? Yeah. We all know what we, we oh, all know yeah. what we, sh we all know what we should have done. But what I want, what I want, mom and pop to do, what I want the solopreneur to do, is I want them to think like a restaurant. And what do I mean by that? Give them a menu. Give your customers a menu. And by that, I mean give them options. Give them alternatives. You know, don't just say here it is. It's almost like take it and leave it. Which one do you want? The black one yeah. or the white one? You know, give them options. Ask yourself a simple question. Is what I am offering um, my customers as safe or safer than what they can do, what they can get at home? Yeah. Because that's what the consumer's thinking. Before course, I engage, yeah. before I go to this restaurant, am I as safe or safer than if I stayed at home? And if you can address that and if you can get that message across – because yeah. people want it. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean this this novelty of 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 binge watching Netflix uh, has been great for Netflix, um, but people are going to wear out that one real quick. Yeah, Netflix and uh, and Zoom, like we're on now, and uh, all of the uh, conferencing platforms have done extremely well on a Facebook Live. Yeah. Um, you know, Facebook Live is really. Uh, done incredibly well record they're doing record uh, stuff here so well, it's, anyway. interesting you yeah. should, it's interesting to say that a, a quick story for you um, I have a client who um, literally as a joke said I am going to teach people to knit. She's an avid uh -huh. knitter. I'm going to teach people to uh -oh. knit during this lockdown on Facebook Live. Uh, she, uh, she's gone from zero to hero. She now has four and a half, five thousand views every time she does one. Wonderful. And she's just done a, uh, a, a joint marketing deal with a major distributor of uh, yarns and, and craft goods. Literally 18 weeks, 18 shows. That's, that's incredible. Gone from Gone from zero to that, so it can be done. You've just got yes. to, you've just got to take a look at it, pivot it, and deliver what people are looking for. Yeah, it's so it's so simple, and yet it's so hard. It's elusive. Hey, Carl, people I know are going to want to contact you, connect with you on the web. How do we? How do we get you? 
How do we connect you with you? Well, I know my, how to get my, you, but tell. I was going to say my face is my, on the face. Yeah. But it, just go into any post office and see my picture <laughs> on the wall. I hear you. Right now, go yeah. to thirdeyemanagement.com. That's T H I R D E Y E management.com, all spelled out, all lowercase. And you'll Hello. find me. You can call me 239. 239- 961-0927. That's 239-961-0927. Hey, and Third Eye, for those of you not aware, it's kind of got a little mystical property to it. It refers to your pineal gland, which is literally uh, above your eyes, but right in between them and supposed to unlock all sorts of uh, psychic and uh, and uh, otherworldly powers. And I'm a believer in it, but... Uh, it's not what we're about. Anyway, Carl, it's great to have you back on. Uh, we'll definitely talk to you again. Keep track of all this stuff and keep us informed so we can share it with you out there. And Carl, be well. We'll talk to you again real soon. Sam, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.